Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about multiple snowstorms with record high temperatures, then a pattern change and an Arctic blast coming for week two of December. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. Good morning, everyone. This is Monday. November the 29th update and what we're taking a look at here is the overall northern hemisphere version of the 500 millibars so you can really get a true depiction on what's really happening right now out there in the atmosphere. What we're looking at is some dangerously cold air that's been bottled up in Alaska and that's going to remain there. It hit 40 below last week and yesterday there was uh, the first 50 below zero temperature in Alaska. But you can see predominantly the flow and the much cooler air where it's, where it's going to remain is off the into the east and more or less into the northeast as we have our ridge going to be dominating for much of the week. It's going to send up numerous amounts of record high temperatures. And then we have our trough out here that's going to be a main player as we go throughout the week. That's in Hawaii right now in this upper level low, but that's going to be moving across as we go throughout the week. So by the time we get into Thursday, here's the overall look. You can see the jet streams really bottled well up to the north, up to the Canadian border. So the snow line and any snow will be kind of a multiple systems, kind of a clipper systems are going to be well to the north, going to be impacting our upper, upper portions of uh, upper Midwest as well as the upper portions of the northeast and going into canada where we've got the ridge going to be dominating underneath with all these record high temperatures that are coming and you can see the trough getting a little bit closer by the time we get into thursday and by the time we get into our weekend that's going to be over parts of texas bringing some rain moving back into their area where the snow line is going to be bottled well to the north so as we transition into December the 6th, kind of the start of week two, we can see the change that we're, we've been talking about for a while here as the ridge will start to build up in Alaska. Now we're not seeing those 40 to 50 below temperatures any longer. The, once the ridge starts to build up in Alaska, that's going to send the trigger and send pulses of this Arctic air and surging south. And I think that's what's going to happen as we come out of this week and go into week two of December. So let's take you through week by week and let's take you through the overall uh, snow amounts for the last 72 hours. And even with these little clipper systems that's been coming across, some of these areas have picked up pretty impressive snowfall totals. I mean, this is just over the, over the last three days, we're talking upwards to two feet in uh, Saranac, uh, New York here. And you can see the, the graph here, the snowfall legend on where some of the snow has fallen. Yeah, all the cold air is bottled well to the north. The jet streams lift into the north. Here's the snow line for the last three days, essentially upper upper parts of what Wisconsin, uh, a good, really a good chunk of Michigan, uh, part, in and around Cleveland area, northern north of uh, Pittsburgh, Nothing along the I-95 corridor, mainly in the higher terrains, going into upstate New York, going into Vermont, New Hampshire, and especially going into uh, upper portions of, 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 of Maine here. And I think predominantly with the with the snow line going to be well to the north, I think a lot of these areas, that's pr primarily where the snow line is going to be really for the next seven days as we have multiple storm systems, multiple snow snowstorms are going to be tracking over the, a lot of the same areas and even going into the weekend, uh, increasing these totals as we move forward. So let's take you back through what's happening because you know we only have actually one more day of a meteorologically fall. I like to go back and look at some of how, you know, how some of these uh, time frames have played out. Here's the overall rain uh, going from uh, from meteorologically fall, which really starts, uh, you know, September 1st, going through the end of November. So once we get December 1st, all the all the records start for winter, essentially. So here's the rainfall, what took place over the last 90 days. Here's the actual rain amounts with the graph. And then here's the above average and below average, what you would typically see this time of year as far as your anomalies. And all the areas in, are in green here. Thus, that's where you've received above average rainfall. So I don't need to tell you the atmospheric river has been full effect. You think you've been getting a lot of rain in Seattle. 
Yes, you have. In fact, I know it rains a lot in Seattle, but this has actually been the wettest fall on record. They had another tenth of an inch yesterday, almost to 19 inches. That puts them in first place. And records go back all the way to 1945, folks. So, yes, you hear me talking about the atmospheric river every single day. It's been in full effect up in this region where they, but where they desperately need the rain in places like Denver. You're talking possibly like an inch and a half in the last 90 days. So, and if you're not getting rain, you're not getting snow either. <laughs> All right. And so, you know, it's funny how the weather works. You know, last year we had probably, I think, what, a little over 80 inches, which was the, the, the snowiest time and over, uh, you know, snowiest time in 37 years. Now we're desperate for tr trying to find a flake in, in Denver where they've gone probably like, what, what, 220 days of no snow for that region. And so we've just been in this pattern that it just keeps to keep repeating itself over and over again. And I think that's going to continue for really predominantly for the rest of the week. But then we've got our major pattern change is going to be on the table as we transition into week two. So. Let's go over this week first as we're as we're taking a look at the overall picture of uh, November the 29th here for Monday. And you can see the jet streams well to the north. These little edges here, that's high pressure. That's high and dry. It's crystal clear skies underneath. A lot of sunny skies taking place for a good chunk of the country uh, today as the jet stream is well to the north. We still got the atmospheric river into play. But it's big. It's going to be predominantly into and again, Seattle, Washington, going into British Columbia as our jet streams well to the north. And then finally, fish tails down a little bit further off to the south. But our snow lines well to the north as well. Upper upper portions of, of Minnesota, upper portions of Wisconsin, you know, upper portions of Michigan here. And then again, upper portions of, of PA and upstate New York where that snow line is going to be taking place. Here's their overall temperatures for today, because the main story this week is we're going to be talking record high temperatures. Yeah, that ridge in place is going to dominate for much of the week. We've got widespread 70s in Texas all the way to Nebraska today with well above average temperatures. All these circles here, that's depicting unrecord high temperatures that expected from the National Weather Service there's 18 potential record high temperatures today out of 369 uh, areas that are reported. So, yeah, I don't need to tell you these red these circles here, even at 52, almost to the Canadian border. That's a record high temperature for that area, as you can see all the cooler or even colder air as well to the north where it potentially could snow is up into the rare upper portions of the United States. So as we transition into uh, Tuesday, November 30th to end basically November and meteorologically fall, again, that ridge dominates for much of the week well to the north. There's our snow track as we got kind of multiple systems, these multiple little clipper systems. Some of this will be lake enhanced at times, but a lot of these areas, again, it's going to be plenty, it's going to be cold enough to the north where if any precipitation does fall, it's going to form in the fall, form of snow in the portions of uh, Minnesota and upper portions of Wisconsin here. And Wisconsin's in a drought. They definitely, definitely need the rain or snow or anything they can get for that area. So that anything that's falls in that region is definitely welcome so as we go into those high temperatures on tuesday november 30th we're seeing we got nine record high temperatures the 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 you know the cooler air as well to the north widespread 70s we're talking 80 85 in southern california okay so that's got plenty warmth for the end of november standards coming this week and then as we transition into that you know the map for for tuesday there's there's your snow line again it's going to be taking place you know kind of well to the north of that, that that a lot of the same areas that have seen snow for the last three days are going to be seeing it again so there's your the record high temperatures for uh wednesday as we start meteorologically fall on december the first yeah, we're talking upwards to 29 possible. And yeah, look at the surge. Look at the surge. We're talking 63 degrees almost to the Canadian border. That is plenty warmth for December 1st standards as any cold air will be bottled well to the north as the jet stream is lifting, you know, again, well to the north this this uh, this week. So as we look at some of the precipitation that may fall for Thursday, and I think that's when we really start to max out because you can see there's hardly 
any rain to deal with whatsoever as we go into your Thursday, uh, December the December the second here. Any rain we we might have to deal with that could form actually in the form of snow, where it's going to be cold enough in these areas, is Upper PA, Upstate New York, getting into Vermont, New Hampshire, portions of Massachusetts, and going into Maine uh, as we go into. Uh, uh, Thursday. So, th but there's your record high temperatures. We're talking a possible 41 record high temperatures across the nation. I don't need to tell you, this is plenty warm for December standards. No question about it. Uh, but there's going to be, again, I think, we're, again, we're going to be talking about a major change that's going to be on the table next week. But we got plenty of warmth to deal with uh, this week across the nation as we go into your Friday time frame, remember that storm system I talked about that's in Hawaii that's going to be moving across? Well, by the time we get into Friday, we're going to start seeing subtle hits of that upper level low. Now we're talking rain chances. You know, this is like light rain, but rain chances starting to enter back in the picture probably somewhere around Friday night in some of these areas into Texas and to Oklahoma and to Arkansas and Louisiana as that upper level low system will be close enough to start spitting out some rain up rain chance opportunities and then again there's your snow line well to the north up here in the upper midwest in the northern regions of uh, new england here so as we transition into your friday temperatures there's 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 the setup widespread 70s to the south and to florida and the southeast there's your cooler air or even colder air. Some of these temp some of these areas may not even get above freezing for high temperatures, but again, well to the north, and that's where your snow line is predominantly going to be. And then there's the setup as we go into your weekend coming up for Saturday, December the 4th. That upper level low will really start to get its act together and be over Texas by then and start spitting out some rain chances back in the picture there going into texas feeding into arkansas feeding into missouri going into iowa here portions of illinois indiana going into ohio and there's your snow track as we transition into your december 4th time frame yet we have another kind of a snow system that's going to be coming across where again it's going to be cold enough to the north now into the dakotas into minnesota where our snow snow is going to fly because we're talking high temperatures now in the 20s so anything that falls in those regions is going to be in the form of snow falling into northern minnesota northern wisconsin as we go into your saturday time frame but as we go into sunday for your sunday that that same upper level low system will start to slowly start to migrate migrate out out of north texas go into east texas and maybe pick up steam once it has that gulf moisture to tap into and it could be a little bit higher, you know, rain chances and a little bit higher amounts as we go into your Sunday into Alabama. We're talking possibly one to three inch rains uh, by then uh, into Mississippi, going into Alabama, feeding into Tennessee, going into Kentucky as we go into, uh, you know, Indiana and Ohio. And a lot of these areas up here, once we get further to the north, it's going to be in the form of snow with our system that's going to be coming across because there's your high temperatures for Sunday. We're talking these are high temperatures, folks. So we're talking up, you know, 20s for, the, you know, well to the north. Anywhere in, anywhere in red is going to be your freeze line where it's predominantly going to be your kind of your snow track. As we're starting to see subtle hints of some of that colder air starting to release from Canada and pulling, pulling into uh, the U.S., but there's your overall uh, rain amounts between now and then for the next seven days, really through Sunday night. There's your bullseye in British Columbia. We're talking, you know, record rains in Seattle. We're talking even more impressive record rains in British Columbia, and that just continues for the rest of the week. Lighter amounts as you go further south, and where they desperately need the rain in California, they're just not going to get it. Again, Denver stays high and dry for the next week. I don't see anything happening in that region. We're just kind of waiting for the transition of our pattern change that's going to be on the table for week two. As, as this week, uh, we have our rain chances for total amounts. And a lot of this won't even take place until this weekend. You know, going into um, Louisiana, into Mississippi and Alabama, going into Tennessee, into the Ohio Valley regions uh, for that region. So if you take a look at the blend 
from the National Weather Service of the overall snow amounts for the next week with those multiple systems coming across. Here's the graph and where it's going to be plenty cold enough. We're talking double digit snowfall totals into northern portions of Minnesota, northern portions of Wisconsin, northern portions of, uh, you know, Michigan here. Uh, around the lakes here into, you know, say Cleveland, going into, you know, upper portions of upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, going into Maine, a little lighter amounts. I don't see anything really happening along the I-95 corridor. And then even higher amounts as we go up into Canada, Montreal, Toronto, we're talking upwards to 10 to 15 inches uh, for the rest of the week as of all of our colder air is going to be bottled up uh, well to the north. But as we transition into week two, we'll take a back, we'll take a, a look at the uh, the North American version. Look at the hot, look at the hot, the low temperatures now in Alaska with that ridge building. We're not talking 20, 30, 40 below zero anymore. The, a lot of these areas are going to be above, actually uh, above zero and even close to freezing. So that's plenty warmth coming back into Alaska. That's gonna set the stage for our trigger and pull some of that Arctic air that's been building in Siberia and Alaska for the really the last two weeks. And we're starting to see those subtle hints of some of that entering into Canada, going into negative 20, negative 30 below zero uh, by the time we transition to in the start of week two. And that's gonna be our pattern change as we kind of zoom in we're talking 30 below zero into Canada by the time we get in December the 6th, as the start of that Arctic air will start to surge southward as we transition into week two of December. And I just think that really starts to pull and then get deepen as we go into the middle of the month for December. So, hey, I appreciate you guys watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.